Chad O'Brien here for Kaiju Pop. We're looking at the Banner Saga, produced by uh, Stoic, or developed by Stoic, published by Versus Evil. Uh, Stoic is a team of guys from BioWare, um, and this is like a Viking-styled uh, turn-based strategy game. Uh, and uh, there's a lot to do here. So we're just going to take a quick look at... Uh, you can see here, this is Rook. We're going to check out his part of the campaign. Uh, the campaign kind of jumps around between various main characters. Um, and here you can see, like, we're talking through a situation. You can make different decisions. And those decisions will kind of affect how the story plays out for them. Uh, you can even lose characters or gain characters uh, based on the decisions you make. Um, and so it's really important to actually see, uh, what's being said and try to think about what the consequences of each action could be. So even though it's a turn-based strategy game, it, the, the strategy isn't just in the combat itself, it's in these little segments outside of fighting. So we're going to take a look at this part first, since it's kind of important. So, you can see, um, because of our decision, I just got a little bit more Renown. Renown's kind of important to upgrade your heroes, uh, and you can also use it to buy supplies and items, and those can be very important, uh, since supplies means you can last longer. Uh, uh, if you run out of supplies, your guys can die of starvation, and that's obviously not very good. And morale won't last as long, so... So here you get like these little conversation set pieces, um, and you can move the camera around. You can really see like the detail in uh, in the artistic presentation. You can zoom in. You can look. There's a lot of inspiration from like very early Disney stuff, like Sleeping Beauty, and um, people like Don Don Bluth. Um, uh, so. Uh, to, to me, it immediately recalled images of, like, uh, Dragon's Lair. And uh, there's not a whole lot of actual animation in these little scenes, but you can see, like, the, the sleeve is ruffling in the wind and that kind of thing. Um, but here, too, you get the little decisions that you can make. Um, and it's just a, a, an interesting way to, to continue on the story, even if it's not really full, uh, voiced. There are a couple of voice narration sections, but they're usually um, to mark a new chapter. So um, let's just look through the rest of this. So right. Um, Right here, the, uh, in this world, there are humans and varls. Uh, they once warred with each other, but then they worked together to fight the gods, and they killed all the gods. Um, and now they fight, like, uh, an evil kind of entity called the Dredge. So, uh, right now we're at one of the god stones which apparently used to uh, guide travelers, so there's that. So uh, the story is, um, for, for Rook anyway, our village was attacked by the dredge and so we had to leave. Um, and you can see up at the top there's like a list of how many clansmen, how many fighters, and how many varl I have. Uh, the clansmen are not fighters, like they're women, children, the age, uh, the elderly, the children. Uh, I think I said children already. But uh, then there's also a day counter, the morale thing up there. Um, and uh, yeah, there's also morale is at the top in the red. And the days of supplies you have is in yellow. So you can see all that. Um, so, and you get 
these little things. It's almost kind of like Oregon Trail, you know. Uh, you come across people, you tell them to do stuff, and you might get supplies, you might get attacked, you might lose people. Um, nobody dies of dysentery. Not yet. Not yet. But, so we've got these guys here. What are they doing out here, you know? So, um, if they can be useful, why not let them join, you know? Uh, they might look shady. I don't know. I couldn't zoom in to see. So. so, there you go. I get some extra fighters. Now, fighters themselves are not your heroes. Um, they become important in more like wartime situations. You can have actual armies uh, battle against each other. Although you don't see anything going on. Alright, so why don't we, I mean, I can't really have drunkards uh, causing shit, so, yeah, tie him up. That could be a problem, so obviously that will affect morale, uh, and if he does something incredibly insane, he might even damage our supplies or something like that, which would obviously be bad. <clears throat> so here we've got our little like uh, village area. You can do things like you have the heroes hall up there. Uh, you can talk to your heroes. Um, there's the rest. Rest is important to like rebuild morale. And if you've got injured heroes, you can rest and they'll become uninjured. So there is no permadeath uh, outside of story situations. In combat, if your heroes fall, like they become injured and they get a penalty um, for a few days. Uh, so let's check out the Heroes Hall so you can see what I'm talking about here. Like it said, yeah, I had something like 50 fighters or something like that, or 200 fighters. So these are my heroes, um, and you can see they have uh, they have a little level indicator at the bottom. You can move them around, and that's really important. Uh, you definitely want to have uh, the order uh, set up so that it helps you. So here you can see all kinds of different things. Like there's the the history of the character. You can see their special skills. Like he's got a battering ram, which is awesome. Um, this is their defense, their strength, which is also health, so you have to be careful. If it falls, they, they start doing less damage, and if it becomes zero, then they're injured and can't fight at all. Um, so, uh, defense will also block some of the damage towards strength, so, uh, both are very important. But you can also damage their, uh, their defense, uh, and we'll talk about that later on um so yeah both of those are important like i said now you go on this is willpower it allows you to do extra things like extra movement extra damage um but it doesn't regenerate exertion is how much willpower you can use in a certain turn um or in a certain action uh so you can only use one willpower at a time um and then uh that can help you do like extra damage or even break shields faster and this is the the bashing skill like that's how much damage you can do to somebody's armor so very important um, so uh, as you level up you'll get skill points that you can put into those uh, however you like you can see like the max possible they can get uh, on the right there. So I'm going to promote this guy. And I get two points. Now this guy's a shield carrier. So, um, like, I want him to be able to, uh, defend people. And he's also got the stone wall, which protects other allies, basically. Uh, he can re resist extra damage. So I want him to have more defense. 
and uh, hmm. Also, yeah, I want him to be able to bash shields. So, uh, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, uh, you can't upgrade their their abilities. That that comes through extra promotions. So I can also promote her. This girl is an archer. So uh, she'll be staying in the back anyway. Uh, but the problem with the archers is they can only move three spaces, whereas your warriors can move four. So uh, if you're not careful, warriors can the enemy warriors can catch up to them. Um, but they have further range, so I'm going to give her willpower and exertion so she can do extra damage from afar. That should be good. Uh, actually, hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna give her uh, puncture is a really nice skill. You do extra damage based on how much armor they've lost. So if I can bash and make them lose extra armor, then I can do more damage. So yeah, let's do that. So there you go. Um, and then my spear guy. So he's awesome too. Uh, he likes to impale people, causes bleed, so there are little status effects, um, and, uh, hmm, yeah, uh, more damage, more bleeding, it's always good, and, yeah, he's kind of squishy, so let's give him some defense, there we go, so, uh, yeah, you can look through all the different characters, they can also hold items. Uh, each item has like a level, uh, so you can see right here it's like one, but um, they have to be that level. Uh, so you, if you get like a level four item, none of these guys can hold it. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and skip uh, a couple of things, and we're going to go straight to a battle. So. Let's go on and check that out, um, and I'll catch you after the break. Here we go. And we're back! Wasn't that a long break? So we're about to check out a battle. This is not with Rook and the others. This is with um, another set of heroes. This is Hakon um, and his caravan. So uh, one thing that's very important is the Varl take up four squares on... on the stage here you can see well humans take up um, just one so uh, here you start every battle you can position your guys um, very important obviously you can see the battle order down there at the bottom now battle since this is a turn-based strategy game uh, it is not it is not the kind of turn-based strategy where all your guys get to go first and then their guys get to go. Uh, it's one to one. One of your guys goes, one of their guys goes. Um, but it continues in that. But the interesting thing is uh, if you start killing the enemies then the, mm, the enemies get to move more frequently. So if there are two enemies they get to move you know, uh, twice as much as if you had four of your your own guys um, so uh, it's very important that you get these guys so I'm gonna move my archer up because uh, they probably can't reach her yet and I want her to be able to actually do damage so we're gonna go for this uh, I want my shield guy Moger I want him up front taking damage um, He's basically my meat sink. This is one of the bigger enemies. He's going to do a lot of damage. Um, and he's got like a shield bash. Which uh, knocks people back. So you can look around. You can see the different order. You can check out every enemy. You can also uh, look at everyone's banner to see their strength. 
uh, their defense and their willpower. Very important, but it can also clutter up the screen, so uh, it's very easy to lose people. Like, where, where am I? Where, where am I going? That kind of thing. Uh, you can zoom in, but it only helps so much. The, the camera doesn't turn. Or at least, I don't know, the, the camera doesn't turn as far as I know. So you can see the horn at the top is my willpower horn. Um, every kill I get, uh, one star will go into that horn, and I can add willpower to somebody's... Uh, I, I can give it to whoever my current guy is. So, can't do anything with him, but I'm just going to stand there and guard... So, there we go. Now my archer, she has a really cool skill uh, where she can burn the ground in like a cross section. Um, and it will leave burning coals as well. Uh, and if enemies move across those coals, they take uh, damage. Or if I move across them as well, so... I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw some coals. So one thing that's also important is to understand the difference between uh, strength damage and armor damage. Because like I said before, like the armor will prevent uh, strength damage. Sometimes. These coals are unaffected by armor. So they just do one strength damage. Period. Bleeding does one strength damage. Period. That kind of thing. When you're actually hitting people, though, that's when uh, it's important to take that into account. So, uh, but, I mean, it's a very basic formula. Your strength minus their armor is how much damage their strength takes. Now, knockback's a really good skill. It does... Um, it does armor damage, it knocks them back so they have to move uh, and if they hit any other units they lose extra armor so that was that was why I did that uh, now impaling from my spear guy is really good because um, like I said it will cause him to bleed and uh, if he takes any steps he'll start losing strength damage or he'll take strength damage from moving because of the bleed. So you can level up the skill, it requires exertion, uh, and that's willpower. So, um, luckily, my spear guy, uh, Spearmaster Luden, has uh, plenty of willpower, so there's that. Now, here, this is really good because this guy has Sundering Impact, which uh, affects adjacent enemies. You'll find a lot of skills actually affect adjacent enemies, so... Um, he does extra armor damage to them. So, we're gonna be doing that. And strength damage, so... So, everybody got hurt there. Now, unfortunately, this guy's special skill is Tempest, where he spins around and uh, hits enemies in a circle but uh, he can't reach any enemies and he has to walk over hot coals if he wants to get to them. So I'm just going to move him over here. Yeah, you stay there. You end your turn. There we go. So, uh, it really is important to, to keep track of both the uh, strength that they have and the armor. Uh, especially these, uh, these dredge uh, especially that shield guy. Like, uh, you zoom in there and he's got 15 armor. Nobody here has, like, something that could devastate him, so you really want to get rid of his, uh, his shield, which is what this guy can do. He's got very strong bashing skill. So. There, I just did, uh, three damage, and he moved a lot, and that cost him that bleed damage from earlier with my spearman. So, uh, that was unaffected by, uh, by his armor. So, fortunate for me. And like I said, uh, 
Here we go. I'm going to use my coal skill. It's going to hurt my own, my Varl over there. But it's going to hurt all four of those enemies. So, uh, kind of a small price to pay. And uh, there you go. So you just saw that promote. She's killed enough people now that she can get promoted. You can't do it on the battlefield, so I'll have to wait. Uh, and you can see the the horn of above now has uh, stars in it. So if I need to, I can use the horn and uh, give my guys some extra some extra willpower. So, um, then the battering ram, uh, here, you can see I can't select the person above me because he's got no place to go. Um, it knocks them back by four spaces, but there's not a free space pass there. So I'm just going to have to do a normal attack. Uh, and yes, you can do battering ram to your own, uh, teammates. Which, you know, it it could work out pretty well in certain uh, instances. Because it does one armor damage, and then uh, they've moved four spaces. So, if you want to get them out of harm's way or something like that, it's a pretty good idea. Um, and that's, that's another thing about willpower, is... Uh, battering ram it gets stronger it does more armor damage but if you only do level one it's just one armor damage so so I'm gonna uh, stick him make him bleed again hopefully he'll move again when it's his turn I'm gonna do that sundering impact again because these guys are still adjacent You know, and another death. So, uh, you just saw a deflection there. So, if somebody's strength is lower than your defense score, your armor score, uh, you have a chance to completely deflect the shot. Uh, and you'll see it when you attack. It says like 50%, 80%. There we go, another death. We're doing pretty good here. So. I really want my shield carrier, my shield basher, to get a kill. It's kind of hard for them because they really are the um, the tanks, and and I mean that that's kind of the hard part. They're, they're the tank; they're supposed to take the damage, but you can only get promoted if you get the kill. So I'm gonna let him live. He's got one health, so anybody could kill him now, but I'm just gonna let him survive. Uh, take out the other guy instead. So, he's got four health left. Uh, four health, four strength. <laughs> and I've put myself into a corner here. Varl are so large that you can easily do this, so it's kind of uh, it's something you have to be aware of. Um, he can't move through the other Varl, so. And there you go, there's that knockback skill. Uh, pain in the ass. Because, um, um, moving does, uh, does sometimes cause you problems. If there are coals in the ground and you move across them, even if you're forced across, it'll still hurt you. Sometimes there's a bleed damage. You gotta be worried. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, I want to save this kill for my shield batcher. So I'm just gonna end the turn there. Yep. And I'll let my heavy hitter kill this guy. Not hard at all. There we go. Now in pillage mode, uh, the turn-based strategy goes away. 
uh, it's no longer one for one. All of your guys get to move before they get even one shot. So, basically, once you enter pillage mode, it's over. Like, there's almost no chance of surviving. You don't get any kind of special bonus for being the last man alive or anything. It's just, it's over. So, uh, there you go. A victory, he can be promoted, and uh, you get more renown. So this has been Chad O'Brien for Kaiju Pop, looking at the Banner Saga. Uh, if you're interested in our site, go to kaijupop.com, or follow us on Twitter at kaijupop, and uh, goodbye.